For this trick, we're going to use a deck of cards, and then I have a prediction that will be sitting on the table the entire time. Now, I'm going to square the deck up, and I'll cut it into two packs, and I'll ask the spectator to select one of the two packs, either one. So let's say they pick this one. They'll take some cards from the top of this pile, as many as they want, flip them upside down, and then shuffle them into this pile. And they can shuffle them again or cut them if they want, completely up to them. Now, I'll ask them to take some from this pile, flip them over, and shuffle them back into this pile. And we could do this as many times as they want. So let's say they want to take some more from this pile. Let's say from the middle. We'll take a batch from the middle, flip them over, and shuffle them into this pile. And then they'll take maybe some from the bottom of this one, flip them over, and shuffle them into this pile. And then, again, they can cut this pile if they want. They could shuffle it more. Take some from the middle here, let's say, flip this upside down and shuffle these into each other. And then they can take the two packs and shuffle them into each other. They can do this as much as they want. Now, as you can see, the deck is all mixed up. And now we're going to look at the prediction. So my prediction says that there will be exactly 22 face down cards. So let's see how many face down cards we have. We have one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 exactly. Well, what else does it say? There'll only be two picture cards, the King of Hearts and the Queen of Spades. So let's look through all the face down cards and see how many of them are picture cards. Oh, there's the Queen of Spades, as mentioned, and let's see if we get the other up. Oh, the King of Hearts and no other picture cards face down. It also says there will be one ace, one and only one ace, and it will be the Ace of Clubs. And as you can see, face down in this pack, there is one and only one ace, and of course it is the Ace of Clubs. Here's what's incredible about this trick. You can set it up so that the prediction says anything you want it to say, and all you have to do is separate the cards that are going to be in the prediction into one half. So in this case, I separated the Ace of Clubs, you know, the Queen and the King that I mentioned, and I have exactly 22 cards here. You can make the prediction different, though, by putting different cards in one of the packs. Now all you have to do is get this pack separate from the rest of the deck, and here's how I did that. So I show the entire deck as a regular deck of cards. I don't call out too much attention to it. I just want to show them that the cards, it's a full deck, all different cards. And then, as I square them up and I cut them, I'm going to exactly cut right in half to the Ace of Clubs. And how do I do that? Because the Ace of Clubs itself has a tiny crimp. I just bend the corner of the card just a little bit, just like that. So now, I can see this from the back, so I can easily see where I'm cutting, and I can make sure that I get that spot every single time. Or I can do it without even looking. If you just let the cards kind of fall naturally into your hands, you'll pick it up and you'll feel that spot that is the Ace of Clubs. So don't make a big deal about that. You just cut the cards in half. Now that you've separated the two halves and this is your prediction pile, everything else works by itself. And I know that seems confusing, but it really does work. And it's because every time you're going to take cards from either half, you're just going to flip it the other way. So think about it this way. If I take this pile and I flip these upside down and I shuffle them into this pile, which I'm going to do. Now, if I take cards from this pile and flip them upside down into this pile, the only ones that are going to be upside down in this pile are the ones that were right side up from this pile, right? Because I already took these and flipped them upside down. So when I take them back, any of the ones that were from this original pile, when I flip them back this way, will be upside down again. So it's just a little confusing, but it works all by itself. So you could do this as many times as you want, as long as every time you take cards from one pile, anywhere from the pile, doesn't matter, the middle, just flip them over first before you shuffle them into the other half. You can do this all day long. And then when you do your final shuffle, you're going to take either half, flip the entire half upside down, mix them together, and then when you separate these cards, the prediction is going to be perfect. One final note, after you're done with all the shuffling, you want to spread the cards out to show that they're really mixed up. But what you're actually doing is checking to see which side is face up now. So at a quick glance, I can see that there's only two picture cards here, the two that I predicted that are in this, so they're face up. I don't want them to be face up, I want them to be face down. So what I'll do is I'll just flip the entire deck over and I'll say, okay, Let's count how many are face down, and they show the prediction. If it had been this way, and they are already face down, I wouldn't flip the deck. I would just scoop the deck up as is, and I would show this side as face down.